Hey, it's Michelle, you're a CXC Biology Tutor. In this video, I'll be going through with you some guidelines for the SBA Paper 3. So this is especially for those private candidates who will be taking this paper. So I'm going to be going through with you the basic exam format and some of the key labs that you should know, that you should be familiar with. So let's start with the exam format. This paper would take you two hours and 10 minutes to complete, and you would be tested on three practical based questions. So they're going to be looking to examine your experimental skills and the use of knowledge. So the good thing about this paper is that candidates can take notes into the exam room with them to assist in answering the question. And the total marks for the paper sometimes vary based on past exam papers I've seen, but usually it could be anywhere between 50 to 60 marks or so, and it is worth 40% of your overall grade. Okay, so let's look at the skills to be assessed. So first of all, manipulation and measurement. So they would really be checking to see your ability to handle scientific equipment, and we look at the actual materials and equipment that you should know about. So just basic proper usage of these pieces of equipment and materials. And secondly, they'll be testing your observation, recording and reporting skills or RR. So this would require you to be able to record your observations, collect and organize and present data in tables or graphs. Thirdly, drawing skills, which is very important and I've seen a lot of questions come on having to draw. So you have to make large clearly labeled diagrams and usually sometimes you may need to add annotations to the labels. And some points about drawing that you should bear in mind when you're drawing, you're only using pencil of course. There should be no shading, no sketching, so clean, smooth lines. and your, par your lines should be, your label lines should be parallel to each other. And the title should be placed below the actual drawing and underlined. And then you also would add in your magnification. So whether it's times two, times three, whatever the magnification is, they may ask you to give. So those are just some key points about the drawing. And then usually your label lines should you should aim to get them on one side of the drawing rather than just all over the place. But the key thing is to have make sure that the label lines are horizontal and parallel and not just sticking all over the place. So that is for the drawing. And then the other skills, analysis and interpretation. So this would be the part testing your use of knowledge. So this would require you to be able to identify any trends, cause, effect, uh, make calculations, state limitations, sources of errors, conclusions, and if you had to modify a particular method for an experiment, examining graphs and interpreting graphs. So, you know, taking measurements from the graph, taking data from the graph and interpreting it. So that would be in analysis and interpretation. And then finally, the planning and designing. So this is when you would actually be asked to plan and execute an experiment, based, usually based on a particular problem or observation, and you would have to usually construct a, a hypothesis and then plan your experiment in terms of how you're gonna investigate this particular hypothesis. And the hypothesis should be one that you can test so those are the skills that you would be uh, tested for on the paper three. All right, so let's look at just a general idea to give you a general idea of the common lab equipment. So you should know how to use a microscope, the Bunsen burner and the tripod, gauze, all of that, that whole setup there, um, test tubes and the rat boiling tubes. You have thermometer, syringe, dropper, pipette, petri dish, crucible, mortar and pestle. If you needed to crush, 
crush something like maybe a seeds, food, whatever the case is, and then being able to utilize the graduated cylinder, which is commonly known as the measuring cylinder, and the beaker, and of course the electronic balance where we would weigh samples, soil for, exa for example. Um, so these are just some common laboratory equipment that you should be familiar with, know how to use properly. So let us look at the, the format of just general recording experiments. So an experiment should always have a title, which gives the topic of the experiment. And then if it's a planning and design, this is where the hypothesis would come in. So it's a statement based on an observation that can be tested. You have your aim. So that is the purpose or reason for the investigation. You list your materials and apparatus. So every single thing that you use, the method, all the steps and the procedures taken, usually in past tense, the results and observations. So this is when you're going to be recording um, either written description, tables, graphs, drawings can be included here as well. And then we go on to look at like precautions, limitations, sources of errors. So the precautions would be like measures taken in advance to prevent harm and to make sure that the procedures are conducted accurately and safely. Limitations would be more related to the influences the researcher, the scientist cannot control. So basically the things that you cannot control, um, so it might be something wrong with the particular lab equipment, um, you may have limited time, sample size, things like that, environmental conditions, temperature, light, things that you don't have any control over. And then sources of error would include like improper techniques in handling the apparatus, making measurements and observations, so human errors, so those are common source of error. Like for instance, measuring the levels of the volume on a measuring cylinder or beaker. So you should always measure at eye level. So if you measure incorrectly, that's known as the parallax error. So these are just some common things to keep in mind as it relates to precautions, limitations, source of errors. And then finally at the end of the experiment, you usually will give your conclusion or inference, which will summarize any findings. So that's a general format for recording experiments. So what I'm going to do now is just go through some of the common labs that you should know for each section on the syllabus. So I'm just giving a quick outline nothing in too much detail. So the in section A, living organisms and the environment, the labs that you need to be concerned with, so in terms of classification and ecology, so you should know to group organisms based on similarities, you should know your sampling methods, particularly the quadrat method, know how to carry that out, know how to calculate the species density based on the number of quadrats thrown, the number of organisms that you find in each quadrat of a particular species. So you should know to calculate the species density. And then also the Tulgrin funnel setup. I've seen this one come a few times on the papers. So know how to set up that Tulgrin funnel method, which is used to extract small organisms from the soil. And then also food webs as well. So you should know how to construct a food web based on information given in a table. So like producers, primary consumers, and you may see like the type of food they eat. So that is classification and ecology. Now the next area to pay close attention to would be soil, the components of soil, and particularly the water holding capacity of soil samples. So basically being able to carry out an experiment to test to see which soil would hold water the best. So for instance, if you're going to compare the clay soil with the sandy soil and the loamy soil, so you should know that you need a funnel, measuring cylinder, filter paper, so you're trying to um, examine how well each soil would hold water. So obviously the one that releases more water is the one with the least water holding capacity and that usually is the sandy soil. Alright, so those are some of the key labs for section A that you should know. Alright, so let's look at some of the labs from section B. 
life processes and disease. So first of all, cells. This is a common one that often comes. So you should know to observe and draw cells from under a microscope. So you're utilizing a microscope for sure. And then being able to draw an animal, plant cell. And particularly they may ask to examine maybe a cross section of the stem or root of a plant. And then osmosis, being able to perform investigations related to osmosis particularly the potato strip experiment that's a common one to show the effects of different solutions on plant cells and then diffusion so how dyes or crystals would diffuse in water so those are the main areas regarding cells so the next topic that you should know about would be food tests for sure the Benedict's test for reducing and non-reducing sugars Burette's test for protein, iodine test for starch, emulsion test, or the grease spot test for fats. So make sure you know the reagents that you'll be using for each test and the procedures and also the expected observations. Thirdly, enzymes. This is another common topic that comes. So you should know to investigate the factors affecting the rate of an enzyme catalyzed reaction. So you're looking at how pH and temperature can affect common enzymes like amylase, pepsin, catalase. And then often they would have a graph to either interpret or you may need to construct a graph based on any information given, the data that you would have obtained. Alright, the next topic would be photosynthesis. So know how to draw a leaf, a dicotyledic dicotyledonous leaf that is, um, in order to calculate the surface area of a leaf. So this is based on like grid lines, how many little squares that we would find within the surface area of a leaf. And then also know the pond weed experiment. So this examines the effect of light intensity on the rate of oxygen production. Also know you're testing a leaf for starch, investigating the need for light. So this is when you have like a black strip or a foil covering part of the leaf. So you're really testing to see if light is necessary for photosynthesis. And then similarly, you're testing to see if chlorophyll is needed for photosynthesis when you're using a variegated leaf. So those are some of the common experiments that can come related to photosynthesis. And then we have respiration. So the typical ones that may come would be the bell jar model of lungs. So know how that would be set up and what parts of the equipment would represent the different parts of the chest. So like particularly the lungs, the rib cage, the trachea, bronchi, etc. So know that bell jar model and what each part represents. And then respiratory surfaces in living organisms such as fish gills, know to label the fish gills. We also have the alveoli in humans and then leaves. We would have covered leaves just now. Um, so those are the first set of experiments you should know about for section B. Now continuing with the next set. So the next topic would be transport. So this is the transport in both animals and plants. So make sure you know the differences in your blood vessel structures. And we're talking about the artery, the veins, the capillaries. Um, also your different blood cells, platelets, red blood cells, white blood cells. So be able to recognize their appearance and to know how to identify each of them. And then for plants, knowing about the rate of transpiration in plants and factors that affect the rate of transpiration. So for instance, wind, humidity, temperature, those kind of things. Next we have movement. So this would be concerned about obviously the skeleton, the bones. So the vertebrae structure, so the vertebral bones that you'll find, the cervical vertebrae, your thoracic vertebrae, lumbar, the sacrum. So you should be able to identify some of the key parts from those bones. And then also the forelimb or the joint, the biceps and triceps attachments, points of origin and insertion. So those are common things related to movement. OK, 
Okay, moving on from movement, let's look at growth. So some of the key labs for growth would be concerned with the germination and growth of seedlings. So in terms of germination, you should know what factors are required for germination to occur. So water, warm temperature, oxygen, and not light. Light is not necessary for germination to occur. Only when the, the seedling has grown and the leaves are exposed now and it can carry out photosynthesis that is when light would be necessary so germination measuring the growth of seedlings so you may need to measure say the length of the roots or the stem of the seedling over a period of time say perhaps a week a few weeks and so you're, you're measuring the length you may need to also measure make measurements related to dry mass or the weight so those are areas that you should look at regarding growth. Next topic, irritability. So the choice chambers is a, a fairly common one that can come in terms of how invertebrates respond to light and moisture in particular. Those like wood lice, so you would have these choice chambers set up and you would see how the organisms would move depending on you know which area is darker which has the most moisture so that is the choice chambers and then we have phototropism so this is now responses in plants so the response of seedlings to light particularly you should know the effect of light and how oxen controls the growth of the shoot towards the light so that is some areas to look at in terms of phototropism and then also know about the pupil reflect so you know in bright light your pupils will get smaller in dim light your pupils will get bigger so this is because of how the the muscles of the iris behave and then the last topic in section b that they tend to test for will be reproduction so know your structures of the flower, um, the wind pollinated versus the insect pollinated flower. Know your structure for the seed, how to label a seed, and the structures of the fruit as well. So these are common diagrams that you may often need to draw. And in terms of disease, I don't have it here, but in terms of disease, they may include in the life cycle of the mosquito so you know you go from adult lazy eggs egg turn into the larva larva into the pupa and then back to the adult so be aware of that just in case but I can't remember seeing a paper come with that particular type of question but I just thought it would just include that as it relates to the disease topic which would complete section B alright let's go on to section C so continuity and variation this is one of those topics or sections I don't often tend to come on the paper but you still have to be aware of the the type of labs that could present itself because it's part of the syllabus so in terms of section C you should know like how to create models of DNA chromosome cell division mitosis and meiosis so they're basically showing how the chromosomes will behave at different stages and then variation being able to record and interpret data on differences in characteristics in animals and plants especially as it relates to heights in humans particularly and then also on the syllabus in terms of speciation you should be able to make drawings that would depict different types of speciation based on either geographical or behavioral isolation mechanisms. So those are topics that could come based on section C. But from going through past papers, most of the questions usually are on section B. And you may see some come on section A, but you just need to be prepared for anything. You just don't know what could come. So hopefully I've helped you have a better understanding of what you should go into the exam knowing. 
So I hope that this video has helped prepare you for the SBA Paper 3.